okay, the, 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 the fourth uh, presentation in our session will be delivered uh, by Dr. Evelina Yalenyauskiede. Yale uh, she is a lecturer of English at Kaunas University of Technology, Lithuania. And her current research interests uh, lie in technology enhanced language teaching, uh, re envisioned language teaching in higher education and development of problem solving and other most important 21st century skills in language classes. Currently, uh, the author is passionate about uh, the promotion of action-oriented approach in the field of foreign language education. A summary of her presentation is, uh, is that um, she'll be talking about her own attempts to implement action-oriented approach through project-based learning and research on how university students uh, perceive this kind of learning. Okay, now, uh, Evelina, the floor is yours. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, thank you, moderator, for moderator. As I have already been introduced, I would like to use this kind of unique opportunity to thank everyone for attending this conference, to thank organizers for, for organizing such a great event and for allowing us to share our experience and what we are doing, how we are teaching and how we are attempting to improve the ways we are teaching and our students are learning. Okay, all in all, uh, as you can see, uh, I am from uh, one of the biggest technical universities in the Baltic States, it's Kaunas University of Technology. I have been teaching English for specific and academic purposes for 14 years. Now we call our course Academic and Professional Communication English. And uh, coming back to my presentation, it's called Shifting Towards the Action-Oriented Approach in Higher Education, Language Learners Perceptions. Uh, Yes, so uh, I'll be talking, first of all, I'll be talking about very general things, about approaches in language learning, then we'll be moving to the action-oriented approach. We'll be introducing the research I did, uh, and we'll be showing some examples and providing conclusions and uh, recommendations. So let me start from very general ideas in, in language education. And let me start from what the NEFL legend Jeremy Hammer states. He say, states that an approach in language education refers to theories related to the nature of language and language learning in general. And the method is already the practical realization, procedures, or techniques of, of any approach. So the earliest approaches such as grammar translation method, direct method, and in uh, audiolingualism focused on repetition of forms, memorization, and reading of text. They were typical examples of explicit language teaching and represented product approaches which treated, treated language as an object of learning and did not focus on learn, learn, learners learning the language. As a reaction against the product approaches, approaches, process approaches appeared in about 1960s, 1970s. They did not emphasize what, what learners need to know, but focused on what they need to experience instead of highlighting product words like output, input, grammar, or test scores to measure proficiency, uh, and also learning about language, they treated foreign language as a process or activity. Probably, as uh, many of you know, the most common is communicative approach or communicative language teaching. And now we are moving to a, a better approach, uh, a more modern approach, action-oriented approach. And the, the method, one of the methods to implement is project-based learning that I applied in my course and did this research. 
uh, here, th this table summarizes of why we should be moving from communicative approach to action-oriented approach. Uh, indeed, in the communicative approach, there is focus on communication and exchange of ideas. Communication is a way and a goal of learning. Whereas in the action-oriented approach, language learning is seen as an activity. If there is a lot of much of linguistic training in communicative approach, in action-oriented approach, there is interaction and working with people. Learners are asked to act together in order to produce something, like create concrete products, for example, planning an outing, making a poster, creating a blog, designing a festival. For, for uh, these artifacts, they uh, feel their ownership. And in communicative approach, there is uh, mainly relevance to language and uh, in action-oriented approach, there is both relevance to language and content, which means that the primary focus is not language. And in in such a, given these ideas, communicative approach might be considered less meaningful and more superficial learning because the, the main goal is just communication, while in the action-oriented approach, asking learners to create concrete product makes communication more meaningful. And it requires more energy to be invested in their performance. And in communicative approach, learning process is still very much individualistic and um, it becomes more collaborative in action-oriented approach. And um, in communicative approach, learning of a language is mainly just for communicative purposes, like learners become temporary foreigners. And in um, the action-oriented approach, language learning is more than, than speaking and communicating, but uh, it's a kind of opportunity to be able to become better at working with each other. So it means students are like world citizens who can work together. Uh, if you want to, uh, yes, so let's move to some more ideas about action-oriented approach. Here I have summarized what, what has been said by Picardo and Law in their latest book. Uh, for those who don't know, Picardo and Love are among uh, the main authors of the Common European Framework of Languages. It's updated version companion volume, uh, which was released uh, quite recently. Of course, it was introduced in 2018, but uh, it was released, I think, uh, in June. It's a book, you can download it from the internet. So, and uh, the, the later publication is uh, from this office it was about the action-oriented approach. Let me show the book. Uh, so you can see it's um, a reference to this book uh, at the end of this slide. So those who are interested, who want to know more about this approach, I recommend reading this book. So all in all, uh, the action-oriented re approach requires that we put learners in collaborative context in group or peer work, that we consider them as social agents acting and using languages in real life, uh, it requires that we engage them in action-oriented tasks, which most commonly are projects. Uh, we should be asking them to produce authentic learning artifacts serving the real purposes. On a uh, we should be asking them to create concrete products during the, the projects so, so that they can feel a kind of concrete sense of achievement. We should also be offering tasks that require critical and data thinking, as well as collective knowledge creation, which means that uh, language learning tasks become more complex and they require 
a higher cognitive level and more cognitive efforts. And in addition, we should tailor tasks so that learners develop both general and communicative language competences, which is which uh, uh, ensures a more holistic development of a learner. So uh, coming back to, to my project, to, to, to what I did in my course, I offered students an action-based project uh, in the course of English for specific and academic purposes. The project was uh, uh, that learners had to find and address any real life question or an open-ended uh, problem related to their major and they had to conduct research on it and while working in groups of three they had to collect data by both doing literature review and conducting online surveys and this kind of project had to culminate in two types of concrete public products uh, they were reports and infographics presenting their findings uh, the study was conducted at Golas University of Technology, as I said, during the course of English for specific and academic purposes, where students are aiming to, to reach higher language level proficiency, C1 level, and their entry level is B2. And the study participants were eight to six second year students from the Faculty of Informatics, where I I have been working most commonly. And the aim of the study was to determine language learners' perceptions of such an action-oriented task. Data was collected through an online survey administered via Google Forms. Uh, the, the survey had both um, uh, closed and open-ended questions and quantitative data was processed by the tool itself. And for open-ended questions, a qualitative, I applied a qualitative approach and looked inductively for the recurring themes in students' responses. So here are the findings uh, of my research. As you can see, the majority of the study participants, uh, eight, about 83%, they indicated that the difficulty level of the task was about right. However, as you can see on the right side, students' opinions regarding their satisfaction with such a multifaceted collaborative project diverged significantly. And this kind of finding is very important as it shows a weak correlation between the difficulty of the task and learner satisfaction level with it. It means that many students seeing the project not too difficult did not perceive such a type of learning as satisfactory. And uh, also given such findings, we can see that students are very different and have individual expectations towards the course. Some of them may not like the more cognitively challenging tasks in comparison to doing more superficial ones to do during the language classes. Also, some students may not like uh, a bit different collaborative context. Also, they some of them may not understand the real value of a different learning environment as their conceptualization of language learning is still tied to the earlier, more traditional environments. Uh, when uh, talking about the most satisfactory aspects of the project, there were three main themes that emerged in the answers of, of students. They were survey creation and data gathering, infographic creation, and collaboration with uh, others. And, um, uh, given this kind, these findings, experiencing, um, we can say that experiencing language learning as an activity uh, of doing a real research was uh, welcomed and was seen more meaningful by technical students as they report about the process aspects, creation of survey, data gathering, and making infographics. Uh, 
uh, students do like social learning and prefer not to be left alone when facing ill-structured problems like this project. When it comes to suggestions for the improvement of the project, students suggested that more time is necessary. Uh, all in all, they were doing the project uh, three weeks. Uh, that makes about, uh, how many lectures does that make? Uh, five, about 10 lectures. They were doing this project about 10 lectures. And the second thing what they suggested is the percentage of the assessment in the final course mark is too low. That percentage made 10% of the final mark. And uh, these findings suggest that students want more time for complex tasks and the marks remain among major motivators for modern students. Also, there was some negative feedback about such a type of the task. It means that students' understanding of language learning may still be predetermined of what they experience in K-12 education. Uh, the students write, uh, wrote that, is this an English level class or is this a graphic design class? I do not see any satisfactory aspects. So some negative feedback there was. Uh, and um, when talking about development of general and communicative language competences, as action-oriented approach requires that uh, learners develop both general and communicative language competen competences, this project met this goal. As you can see uh, on the, in the first figure, learners indicated that they developed visual literacy and digital literacy, and in this uh, in this second on the right side you can see that they agree that they develop their research skills and in particular they develop uh, the ability of writing report create the uh, survey creation and they also mastered new uh, survey tools. And when it comes to communicative language competence, more than a half of respondents agreed that the project helped to develop it. And in addition, there were very many neutral answers, like 23%. It might be uh, one implication of that, that uh, there were no very clear explanation of what is included in, in communicative language competence. So it might be that no, not all students could understand what, what it includes. And when it comes to most the common challenges, difficulties, what, what were the most ones, uh, the most common ones indicated by students, they were collecting answers for the surveys. Uh, students said that it was difficult to find the respondents and elicit genuine responses from them. And um, also, uh, it's quite interesting, also collaboration was indicated among uh, the most the satisfactory aspects, it also appeared to be among those that caused the challenges for students because of various facts. For example, the students said that, that there were an equal participation level, they lacked understanding of what real collaboration is, there were difficulties in groups uh, in reaching consensus, lack of time for working together, uh, students were still splitting the task into smaller tasks, and of course, as it is common among students, uh, there was procrastination uh, in this aspect. And one quite disappointing finding is that preference for cooperation instead of collaboration remains. Students think that they need to divide tasks as it saves time and uh, probably they are not used to real type of collaboration. And uh, the main perceived opportunities of positive science of the project were that students learn new things, they, they learn creation of studies and infographics, mastered new digital 
digital tools, increased awareness of research processes and collaboration. And one very promising finding is that students increased engagement, which is undoubtedly resulted in, in greater motivation. And this kind of finding is in line with the positive findings about active learning methods in education in general. Because whenever our active methods are given to students, then their engagement increases. And here are some examples of what students made during the project. So they collected data via online surveys and they had to, to present this data in the form of infographics. For example, the first one was how do IT students celebrate Christmas because the, the, the research was done before Christmas. And the second one was how do KTU students make money? So again, you can see the answers in the form of infographics. And one more example, where students uh, took a very similar topic. What are the most common money-making methods among IT students uh, at our university, uh, at, at the Faculty of Informatics? They also conducted research and um, represented its results in, the, uh, in this infographic. Okay, to conclude everything, I want to say that the, the action-oriented approach promotes meaningful language learning as the world has already become project-based and collaboration has become the norm. Such type of learning is more suitable for learners. Action-oriented uh, uh, action-based projects include many constituent parts in comparison to traditional tasks which increases the possibility that some of these aspects may be disliked by students or insufficiently prepared scaffolded by educators. Uh, they require such projects require more cognitive efforts and include social aspects. Not, not all students may like it. That's why educators should spend additional time for explaining learners how this new type of learning is more beneficial because the understanding of language learning may still be predetermined out on of what they experienced in K-12 education. And simply do not get upset if some negative feedback practice makes perfect. Here are some recommendations in case you want to implement the action-oriented approach by, uh, by um, uh, project-based learning method, then I recommend everyone reading a, a very good book uh, about project-based learning. You can see this book. It explains all major seven elements that are required for, for project-based uh, learning uh, or teaching projects. And in addition, you should remember that planning should be detailed and include both scaffolding and assessment. And the resources for the project have to be anticipated to the fullest extent possible and arranged well in advance. And uh, for the final remarks, uh, let me uh, quote uh, an EFL legend, Jeremy Hamak, who states that in foreign language education, there is no direct answer to, to the question as to which method, approach, procedure, or technique guarantees the greatest learning achievement. Uh, however, as language educators, we should be constantly looking for ways to facilitate language learning, since constant search for new ideas keeps us going, stimulates our curiosity, and it is curiosity and research which are the lifeblood of, uh, of the engaged and engaging uh, teachers. Here are my references. Thank you for your attention. Minutes for discussion.
questions. Probably uh, may have some questions from the virtual audience. Okay. Okay. Any questions or uh, any comments? Okay, uh, Evelina, uh, could you hear the question? Um, uh, what? Uh, do, do I do I need to uh, repeat the question? I, I don't hear the question. Where is it? Okay, uh, uh, one of the participants uh, thought the uh, feedback was pretty negative. And she uh, would like to understand why uh, and how you drew the conclusion. Okay, so where should I be seeing the feedback? You, you, uh, you can't see it. it it's uh, from one of the physical participants. Okay, could, could you repeat that, that kind of feedback? Okay. Maybe you can just louder. Okay, good. I... Um, okay, the student said the task was easy, which doesn't, I, I think you need to go to a microphone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because, okay, I'm just curious. Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. I, I just, uh, okay, the student's feedback was that the task was quite easy, yeah? Okay. About right. The level of difficulty was about right. Not too easy, and not too difficult, as they okay. said. Okay. But then they said it wasn't so, that didn't correspond with then the final feedback. They, it wasn't really useful um, as for, for language learning. It was more a graphic design, but I'm, I'm overdoing it slightly. So there was it not, you said it yourself, it was not corresponding. So what I don't understand is now your conclusions. All you're saying is basically, we need to explain this exercise better. Am I too critical or? Did you understand? It's okay, but uh, uh, I don't really understand the question. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think I think uh, the audience, the participants' question was, uh, well, seeing the negative feedback of the students, uh, how did you deal with that? Um, okay. Seeing negative feedback, I think uh, uh, we need to to continue the action-based projects. And as I said, as uh, in comparison to traditional tasks, these projects usually have um, many constituent parts. So it's not that easy to organize everything perfectly. And it might be that students, uh, one part of students may dislike one part of aspects, the other part of students may dislike other aspects. So it's not that easy. And that's why we get negative feedback. And students, uh, as it, from the findings, it's very well seen that our students are very different and their expectations though the, towards the course are, are different. So some of them want more work to be done do, during the course. The others want to just to, to have it an easy way, like uh, doing very traditional tasks and not going that deep into a kind of research and doing tasks that require uh, more cognitive efforts. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Okay, and then I, I do have a follow-up question uh, to your response. Uh, from what you said, uh, there's a lot of variation among the uh, student expectations uh, in your group. So, so uh, do you have any strategy coping with that? Uh, I mean, well, could you repeat what kind of strategy? Oh, uh, uh, how did you how did you deal with uh, the different uh, variations of different students, student, student expectations? Uh, uh, don't know even how to answer right now. Hmm. This kind of question. Okay, uh, are there any other questions? 
comments? Okay, so I, I believe everything was uh, reasonably clear. Yeah, okay, then, then let's uh, thank Evelina for her presentation. Thank you, thank you very much.